I would like to start by thanking you all for joining us today. Uh, we have representatives from companies and organizations in countries like Germany, Switzerland, Austria, Sweden, uh, Belgium, Finland, the Netherlands, and, and China. And this is, I think, the best evidence of the interest and opportunities in this sector, which is already very relevant and also strategic in Castilla-La Mancha, in our region, as we will see today in the different presentations. I also want to thank the different organizations supporting the celebration of this event, particularly the German Chamber of Commerce for Spain that is hosting this event today, but also the, the Danish, the Norwegian, and the Swedish Chambers of Commerce in Spain, and together with uh, Business Finland. They have helped us to connect with most of you today, so we want to thank them for that. And of course, I want to thank uh, all the speakers who will be sharing the experience with us today, hoping that this will be just the first step for further collaborations. Before I give the floor to the rest of participants, I would like to share some practical information for the for this event. So, you know, during each presentation, you will see on your screens a QR code, as you can see now uh, in the screen. This is QR code. You can you can scan the code with your mobile phone camera and so you can directly connect with us on LinkedIn. So it's easy to interact and connect with the people that will be participating today. You will also have access to a chat area where you can send your questions at any time and we will attend them during the Q&A time later. And I also want to say that after this session, you will receive a link to all the presentations uh, that we will be sharing today. And now uh, I would like to give the floor to Walter from Plettenberg. He is the general chamber, he is the general manager of the German Chamber of Commerce for Spain and he will now speak to us. So please, Walter, your turn. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much, Luis. Uh, good morning to everybody, distinguished uh, speakers, ladies and gentlemen. I'm very pleased to welcome you now to the seminar on behalf of the German Chamber of Commerce for Spain. The subject of renewable energies is very close to our house, to the Chamber of the German Chamber of Commerce. Since 2004, we have organized more than 30 German-Spanish specialist seminars on renewable energies and energy efficiency on behalf of the Federal Ministry of Economics and Energy of Germany. Within this framework, we have accompanied more than 200 German suppliers in their first steps into the Spanish market and have put them in touch with Spanish partners and customers. In all these years, we have witnessed the ups and downs of renewable energies, especially in the photovoltaic sector. We are therefore all the more pleased that the Spanish market once again offers reliable parameters for companies in the sector. The Spanish government ambitious development targets as defined in the climate and energy plan envisage investments of 241 billion by 2030, which will create up to 350,000 new jobs. The expansion of installed wind and photovoltaic capacity will play an important role in reducing dependence on imports of fossil fuels. Castilla-La Mancha is an important location for this, as we will hear today from the following speakers afterwards. We are also convinced that hydrogen will play an important role in the near future. Actually, everybody is convinced. As the German Chamber of Commerce of Spain, we see great potential for cooperation between Germany and Spain in this emerging segment, especially in the production of green hydrogen. The Hydrogen and Fuel Cell Technology National Center of Castilla-La Mancha will certainly present this in more detail afterwards. Those of you who would like to deal with the location Castilla-La Mancha more, than intensive, more intensively will find EPEX, the Foreign Trade and Investment Institute of Castilla-La Mancha, uh, an excellent partner to support you in all aspects of your settlement project. We sincerely hope that this seminar today will give you enough good reasons to arouse your interest in Castilla-La Mancha. Um, as a business location and encourage to take the next steps. Now I will wish all participants every success 
and thank you once again for inviting me to this EPEX event and thank you for your kind attention. I give the floor now to, uh, I don't know if it's Luis again. Yeah, I will, I will introduce Rafael. Thank you. Thank you a lot. Thank you, thank you for your words, Walter. So uh, now uh, Rafael Marinero will speak to us. He is the general manager at Vincent Mann Spain. He is a member of the board in the German Chamber of Commerce, but also a member of Castilla-La Mancha business community, as Vincent Mann is located in, in Guadalajara. So please, Rafael, your turn. So thank you very much for the efforts of uh, of uh, letting me uh, participate. Yeah. Well, uh, as manager of Wittemann in Spain, I represent uh, a very good example, I think, of a company that uh, is very happy to be in this region and that uh, is uh, an example of all the advantages that uh, this region can offer for for companies and for businesses. Uh, if we come to communication, sorry, for instance, uh, let's take into account that we are, in, let's say, the gravity center of, uh, of Spain. Uh, we can uh, easily access every point of Spain at the same uh, the same time. Uh, we have a huge uh, web of roads uh, to communicate with uh, land transport, and also we have a very good uh, facilities concerning IT communications. Uh, and so on. But for me, one of the main, the most important things uh, to be here in this region, and uh, this is uh, one of the main reasons why uh, our company, our multinational, is still uh, investing a huge money here, is uh, the labor force. Uh, let's say the Castilla-La Mancha is uh, close to Madrid, uh, which is an, is an advantage to get uh, very qualified people, uh, but also has a very strong local uh, people to um, fulfill jobs with less qualifications. So that means that we are in a good balance to get the proper labor force for our purposes at all times. And uh, also one of the characteristics of, of the region I mostly appreciate, uh, mostly in this, in this year of COVID times, is the support from the local and regional uh, authorities. Now is time to work together to overcome the crisis and what we feel in this uh, region and this area is uh, a full support uh, from all the institutions to get out of uh, of the of the crisis we are living now. Finally, uh, if we come to renewable energies, uh, say that Castilla-La Mancha, in my opinion, that I know very well, uh, is plenty of land and uh, quality of uh, green and even sun. So I think, uh, for, for, from my experience, is a perfect place to settle down. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you a lot, uh, Rafael. Uh, I'm very happy that you could join us finally because today you've been like a real ambassador of our, our region. So thank you very much for your kind words and for your support. So we will now proceed, proceed to the second block of contents uh, where we will know more about the current situation of the renewable energy sector uh, and the supporting lines available in Castilla-La Mancha. Our regional minister of economy, Patricia Franco, that you can see here in the picture, will not join us uh, live today, unfortunately, but she will participate in the event through this video. Thank you for your time and interest in our region and many thanks to the German Chamber of Commerce for Spain for your support. Unfortunately, my responsibilities within the government of Castilla-La Mancha have pre prevented me from being with you live in this interesting meeting. Today I'll be visiting a new pharma investment project expansion together with our president Emiliano García Page. However, you are in really good hands as you have the opportunity to talk to the German Chamber of Commerce, also with Rafael Merinero, General Director in Winsenman, Spain, or Roberto Campana uh, from the Hydrogen and Fuel Cell Technology National Center, Oscar de la Rubia from our Institute for Concentration Photovoltaic Systems, and Pedro Huarte also from Vestas Company. So, as I said, you are in really good hands, you won't miss me at all today. But uh, thank you all for your commitment, uh, especially to, to the people that is going to talk to you. 
in sharing your point of view, information and experience on Castilla-La Mancha investment opportunities. Of course, I cannot forget to mention my IPEX and the General Director Enterprises team for setting this meeting into motion. Our work as government is currently focused on tackling the pandemic, trying to reduce its impact on our, on our regional economy as much as possible. It's been difficult times, but um, we have not set aside our aim to grow, and more specifically, continue our public policies growth to bring new investments to Castilla-La Mancha. We are now more convinced than ever that our region meets the ideal conditions to be a premium investment destination. In this tough time we are all going through, we have not only reinforced such conviction, but we have also provided ourselves with uh, a greater number of tools to facilitate the arrival of new projects to be developed in our region. As for example, last uh, 24 July, uh, we approved in Castilla-La Mancha a new important law to ease business projects which want to settle in our region, known as uh, Law on Priority Projects. A new law that has established the business support units composed by a special business team whose purpose is to provide comprehensive support for any investment projects focused in our region. This special team, led by business instructors, one per each province of our region, uh, have uh, as main task, for example, advice on the beginning on, of the investment, help the streamline to streamline, sorry, help to streamline the administrative uh, processing, and also guarantee access to all aids and financing means to carry the projects out. Summing up, this ambitious law is an important measure that will improve our conditions for receiving investments in Castilla-La Mancha. Well, today this meeting will be referred mainly to renewable energies and strategic sector for the government of Castilla-La Mancha, which um, has an enormous potential here in our region, as for example, Castilla-La Mancha has 15.7% of the total national generation wind energy, or we are the first region in Spain generating photovoltaic energy, as uh, Isfok will say afterwards, is 21.3% of the total energy in Spain. If we talk about um, the energy power, it comes 73% of uh, renewable sources here in Castilla-La Mancha. And we also have, as you we know today, main uh, important research centers as uh, the National Hydrogen Center, and we all, we all know about the European Union um, Convention of uh, Hydrogen, uh, especially in, in carga, uh, vehicle carga, but also the Institute of Concentrated Photovoltaic System and the Chamber, the, sorry, the Clamber Biorefinery that is also in Puerto Llano City in uh, the province of Ciudad Real. All I can assure is that our government is at your totally disposed to bring any collaboration for the development of investment projects in our land. I, I do hope um, as, as you will go through the, um, this time in, in, in this conference that today's conference will be very fruitful for everyone, that the experience of all the speakers bring light to future projects that finding Castilla-La Mancha the best, the best destination to their invest. And also I hope that um, we have future chance of sharing another meeting with you, either in person or by virtual means. And thanks a lot to everybody for being here today, talking about Castilla-La Mancha investment opportunities, especially to these uh, energy renewable sources that we have in Castilla-La Mancha. And to all of you, I hope to see you soon. Thanks a lot and enjoy your time. So now uh, I will give the floor to Javier Rosell. He is the Enterprises General Director here in Castilla-La Mancha. Uh, and the, his responsibility uh, are the policies for the attraction of investment, as well as the management of incentives, innovation, and financing uh, for companies established in the region. Today he will share with us uh, what Castilla-La Mancha has to offer for companies looking to start a business. So please, Javier, your turn. 
Thank you. I will say thank you for this introduction, and I also thank you for uh, for all the uh, speakers that uh, are part of this uh, of this event. Uh, on the first uh, point, I would like to to highlight the importance of Castilla-La Mancha. Some of the previous speaker uh, uh, point out. because our region is, as the councillor said, one of the most important uh, regions in the terms of renewable energy. But apart from that, apart from our location, we would like to share with all the participants, with all the persons that attend this meeting, our strategy for supporting new and existing businesses in Castilla-La Mancha region. So let me share on the a slide with you about this, uh, about this introduction, about the main benefits from being part of Castilla-La Mancha region uh, and some other relevant issues. I would like to move this presentation. In the first, uh, in the first step, we would like to to highlight that Castilla-La Mancha put into practice uh, his main uh, strategy for supporting businesses that we call Plan Adelante with uh, some relevant and different areas. As you say, this is a comparison between the first plan Adelante until 2018 and the second one that was passed, put into practice in 2020. As you, as you could, uh, as you could uh, check uh, the, the financial path of this uh, plan Adelante was increased nearly 8%. So we also try to reach uh, higher percentage of companies and independent contractor, contractors for this uh, for this plan, and also in the creation of job. This uh, was uh, an strategy uh, put into practice for the regional government uh, in order to support of all kind of companies and also to put in this in the same place to gather all the information in the same place in the Plan Adelante webpage with the, the most uh, relevant information about how to uh, settle a new business in Castilla-La Mancha and also how to create and also how to develop the businesses in, in our region. As uh, you can check the first part, the, the data, the first part of the, of the plan until 2019 are the important and relevant uh, benefits for our region. In order to create this strategy, we settled uh, six different areas and the companies and the SMEs of Castilla-La Mancha and the newcomers would benefit from these different areas. And these areas are also supported with uh, different kind of, uh, of programs that offer incentive, aids and financial support. Uh, these areas are related to the different uh, stages of, uh, of a company. We start from entrepreneurship and uh, we finalize with uh, financing all the support that the companies require in this uh, kind of area from entrepreneurship to investment uh, through innovation commercialization and internationalization and financing could be could be checked and could be fine in the in the measure of Castilla-La Mancha government for supporting new companies this uh, really has been one of the most important uh, key issues of this strategy, put into the same practice, this pathwork, this itinerary for the companies that want to start, for the companies that want to innovate, for the companies that want to go through uh, other countries up for internationalization, and also uh, on a horizontal uh, area set for companies that need to, to, to reach financing for uh, new projects. So, one of the most important points that uh, we know uh, that the companies uh, that are looking for a new place to settle the project is uh, about investment, about investment policies, about investment areas. So for this, we put into practice in the in the second area, as we mentioned, support measure for the creation of consolidation of businesses. This investment project with a cost uh, between 5,000 and 900,000 euros uh, could uh, get uh, a financial uh, support from Castilla-La Mancha region. This is a uh, non-reimbursable uh, aid, but also with uh, for supporting and for com complementing this uh, aid, 
We also offer in this kind of collaboration with national government other kind of project uh, program such as reinduced uh, reindus funds uh, in order to uh, support and attract new investment in Castilla-La Mancha region aiming to create uh, jobs and to create new businesses and also for these uh, new competitiveness uh, activities. Also, uh, we talk about, uh, in this case, about renewable energies, about green uh, economy, also offer measures to improve uh, energy uh, for own construction electricity, for uh, also promoting uh, mobility and development as a regional associate infrastructure network. Uh, we consider uh, that this is uh, going to be one of the key uh, players at the one of the key sector in the in the, near, in the following years also taking into account the strategy of the of the European Union for uh, next generation funds that uh, point out the importance of, of uh, this uh, uh, sector the uh, renewable energies green economy uh, all related to hydrogen, green hydro, hydrogen, uh, electric batteries, and these uh, new uh, ways of, of economy. So in Castilla-La Mancha, the companies that want to establish a new uh, business, a new project, or, or the companies already uh, settled in our region could find a uh, financial and aid uh, from a project uh, in this first step until 900,000 euros. And also, as the councillor said, a new law for priority projects in order uh, to offer a security uh, a standard, a security framework for the companies that want to, to come to Castilla-La Mancha. About the big projects, we could say big projects, uh, they are uh, higher than 900,000 euros. There are another program for supporting this project. We, we know that this kind of project that uh, want to settle or want to, to reimburse in Castilla-La Mancha uh, need a big uh, investment for, for this machinery, for equipment, for civil war, for pre preliminary studies. So in this sense, uh, we could offer as one of the region in Spain with a higher percentage of aids available to them uh, in from as you could say in the slide, from 25% to 45%, depending on the size of, of the companies. Uh, we would like to remark in this sense that Castilla-La Mancha has a really good track record in reaching this kind of uh, fund from the European Union, because in, in this moment, more than 20 projects are waiting for the result of the evaluation of the score of these uh, regional incentives, uh, for sure, we could offer uh, the, the, the whole support from the beginning uh, to the end for trying to find uh, locate the location for supporting in, in developing all the information technical and financial that you need to settle and for a quiet and safe landing to our region, we have our help. As we, uh, we mentioned before about investment, we uh, in Castilla-La Mancha we focus on on offering a, a preferential framework that we accelerate and and simplify uh, the administrative project process. We know that this is one of the most important part, uh, one of the most important point for uh, foreign companies that uh, want to settle, want to to come to a new uh, country. This uh, security reason, this uh, security issues, this the administrative project, the red, uh, red, the red tape uh, process. So in order to offer uh, a really good framework, a really safe framework to establish in our region, the government of Castilla-La Mancha approved in July 2020, 2020 uh, a new law uh, that uh, will uh, declare priority project that consider that consider uh, that contribute to the activation of the economic activity of Castilla-La Mancha and also pertain to uh, any strategic sector appointed uh, by the regional government and one of these uh, sector are all the rela are all related to green economy to uh, renewable energy. So we know the importance of this uh, sector for our region for the devil 
for the development of, of Castilla-La Mancha, of our activity, and also with important uh, package of incentive and important package of aids, we also offer this law to accelerate the process of uh, establishing in our region. Um, some of the benefit that we would like to remark uh, about uh, the law, uh, the, all the presentation we'll share with you, so you can have all this information and you can contact us if you have any doubt or any kind of uh, information uh, that you require. But in, in order to highlight some benefits, uh, is, uh, we would like to, to share with you the preferential treatment and processing at any public administration of government body from Castilla-La Mancha in order to, to reduce uh, deadlines. And these uh, deadlines, uh, as you could say, will be helped. So this is quite important because uh, we know the long process of establishing a new, a new project and the, the, the difficult decision to, to select uh, a proper uh, location for establishing a new project and in order to uh, to give the uh, the possibility of companies to consider Castilla-La Mancha as a main player for this sector renewable energies, uh, with this law we try to reduce the deadlines that uh, normally you have to follow for a for a standard project. Also, especially this the project that uh, will declare as a priority will have preferential access to financing a constitution of guarantee with Castilla-La Mancha and his dependent financial entities. We know, apart from the ads, uh, this is uh, another important point to get the support from the region in, in, in terms of financial incentive to establish in a company, to establish in a, in a location. So for this kind of project declared as a priority project, they will have uh, uh, some uh, special preferential access to financial and constitution of warranties. Also, in, apart from the apart from the red tapes, apart from the financial, it's important the, to highlight that the terms of the, the different calls aimed at incentivating business investment. Uh, the project that considered as a as priority project uh, will have uh, or will increase in this case the punctuation of the score of the project according to the call framework. Uh, it's also a, a way to support that the project will consider as a priority project, they could have the possibility to get a higher percentage of, of a score in the in the frameworks and the call that we, uh, we mentioned before. And also regulation and also support from territorial and city planning regulation fast track also, with the, the administrative issues, this is uh, another of the most important point for, for new project with this uh, priority project declaration. Some issues related to urban qualification requires according to the land use and, and urban planning framework could be, uh, could be used in, for this administrative authorization. Uh, and for the urban plan instruction, I mean, depending on the Company, depending on the on the location that the company could uh, could establish the, the new factory, uh, once the the project uh, will declare a priority project, will could have this regulation and city planning fast track. Among them, also with the, this declaration, the public utility and social interest declaration of the project, also another issues related to to soil related to the place. Of, of the company will establish corresponding to legal efforts, uh, regulation, the Spanish law of, of, of soil could be uh, applicable. And as the councillor said, the, the La Unidad de Acompañamiento Empresarial, this is the support business unit that we uh, uh, offer a, a tailored support for this uh, new project. We know that this, uh, this uh, adventure we could say to establish in a foreign country could be quite difficult and uh, inside this law, uh, one of the most important points for the for putting into practice this business support uh, unit that will offer assistance to the new companies in order to all the administrative issues, all the declaration, all the information that we require. So you will have a body, you will have uh, something like a business support 
for giving a personalized and tailorized uh, support, as we say, for uh, uh, reaching, uh, for accelerating all administrative processes that the project may need until it's set up. Apart from investment, apart from uh, this law that we, uh, we uh, put into practice in July, also one important point for, for companies, for foreign companies, so for, for companies that will uh, invest in this uh, renewable sector is, uh, is this innovation support, present and development support. So because of that, we have already established uh, some instruments, some aids and financial instruments that could support, that could complement the investment uh, assistance in order to support in a project that will uh, uh, develop innovative solution until 250,000 euros, uh, developing research and innovation uh, and development solution by themselves or in collaboration with Tiger One companies. Also, the creation the with the synergies of this renewable energy sector with other sectors key players in Castilla-La Mancha, such as uh, aeronautical, uh, manufacturing, or, or any kind of sector that could uh, benefit from this kind of collaboration. Um, finally, the financing, as we say, is another important point. Among other projects, uh, we could offer the assistance for, for supporting new and existing projects, uh, consolidation of companies, and SNEs that uh, want to invest uh, or invest in Castilla-La Mancha with the strategic project for creating and generating new economic de development on the region. So, apart from the apart from all the all the areas that we mentioned that are important in terms of uh, supporting uh, new businesses from entrepreneurship to finance it, uh, we consider that it's important to highlight the some levers that uh, will help to Castilla-La Mancha to develop as a, as a premium region. And also we mentioned industrialization, structuring of the territory, digitalization and sustainable growth. All these levers will support, will complement the ads that we offer in the plan Adelante. So we have tried with this presentation, with this introduction, uh, just to mention all the benefits for getting or for reaching or uh, selecting Castilla-La Mancha as a destination of, of your business, all the support that we offer to uh, business related to renewable energies, we are combined about the importance of the sector, but also we want to offer supporting lines, lines to investment in Castilla-La Mancha, tailored help to support your business, uh, safe landing of your company in our region and also uh, personal, personalized support with this business uh, support unit. Uh, we have at your disposal for further information for sure and we hope to see you in Castilla-La Mancha at your prime destination. Thank you. So thank you a lot Javier for your detailed presentation. As Javier was saying we will share this presentation with all of you after the event. Now we, we will open the third block. This is the final block of the session. And in this block, we will be sharing different renewable energies opportunities. As you have already heard in the different presentations, our region is um, one of the leading regions in, in Spain for renewable energies. 50.7% of total wind energy generation comes from, in Spain, comes from Castilla-La Mancha. 21.3% of total photovoltaic generation is also from Castilla-La Mancha. And now other sources as the hydrogen are more and more present every day. So we'll know more about it and we'll start with the CNH2, the hydrogen and full center uh, cell national technology national center based in Puerto Llano here in Castilla-La Mancha. Today we have with us Roberto Campana, he's um, research unit uh, manager. He is, has more than 15 years of experience on the full cells and more than 13 years in oxide cells. He will show us um, one of the initiatives that they are developing in the center in this area and we'll also talk about the CNH2 technical capabilities. So please, Roberto. 
Thank you, Luis, for your presentation. Good morning, everyone. My name is Roberto Campana, and I'm going to talk about the invest opportunities in Castilla-La Mancha from the point of view of hydrogen, electrolyzers, and fuel cells. Okay, first of all, I want to present my research center. I work at the Spanish National Center for Hydrogen, which is a public organization created in 2007 through a research and development consortium between the Spanish ministry and the local government. We are placed in Puerto Llano, in Castilla-La Mancha region, which is, which is located in the middle south of Spain, between Madrid and Andalusia. We are a well-connected city by the Spanish high-speed train, so you can arrive to our center from Sevilla or Madrid in about one hour. Okay, the National Center, the National Hydrogen Center is focused on hydrogen and fuel cell technologies development covering all the hydrogen value chains. Since 2007, Spanish National Center has participated in more than 30 projects funded by national and international research and development programs. During these years, we promote and boost the hydrogen and fuel cells technologies within a national and international level throughout social perception studies, academic formation, use and application disseminations. We also carry out the research studies, experimentation and validation of prototypes and equipment, including all the hydrogen value chains. We develop and scale up different processes and we implement research and development projects by or uh, under contract projects or by public funded projects or with our strategic projects. And we also carry out uh, third parts or duty services uh, such as assistance, market consult consultancy services, security and so on. Okay, as previously mentioned, we cover all the hydrogen value chains, and here you can see the research and development strategy lines at our center. We work on safety and standards. Uh, we also work on hydrogen generation, on hydrogen storage, on the hydrogen conversion into energy. In, we also work uh, in hydrogen integration for different applications and also uh, in socioeconomic and cross-cutting issues. In all these lines, we work on different technologies. For, for example, we work on the development of high temperature fuel cells, solid oxide fuel cells, and also in the development of low temperature fuel cells, proton exchange membrane fuel cells, and the same in the hydrogen production, in the electrolysis technology. So we work in different technologies uh, for every strategic lines that I presented here. Okay, so once we have seen a brief summary of the Spanish National Center and its activities, it's time to, it's time to talk about the opportunities we have in Castilla-La Mancha region. As previously mentioned, we are in the middle of Spain and we are a well-known region mainly because of Don Quixote and Sancho Panza, but we also have a very strong primary sector, which represents around 10% of the regional economy. Uh, this eco economy is mainly associated uh, to products such as wine, cheese, oil, and so on. Okay. Since Castilla-La Mancha has a strong primary sector, it has the availability to produce biomass from different sources or wastes, such as farming, mining, animal, cities, agricultural sector. So, using, for example, anaerobic digestion or dark fermentation to treat uh, these kinds of wastes, it is possible to produce a biogas, which is composed of methane, carbon dioxide, and water vapor. So, to conclude, if we use the adequate process, we can obtain a green fuel from a wide uh, variety of waste. Uh, and it is important to point out that currently one of the best options is to burn this biogas to produce electricity and heat. 
Okay, in our case, I'm focusing on the current situation where a reduction of fossil fuels dependence, decarbonization, and the use of renewable sources is mandatory. We propose the use of biogas as fuel for high temperature fuel cells in order to improve the overall efficiency of the waste revalorization process. So, solid oxide fuel cells are non-commercial electrochemical devices where the chemical energy of the fuel is directly converted into electricity and heat with high efficiency. We can reach efficiency values of around 85, 90%, and they can operate in reversible mode. This means that they can work as fuel, as fuel cell or electrolyzer or electrolyzers only changing the used fuel. And the most important advantage from the point of view of waste revalorization is that the solid oxide fuel cell systems can transform directly the biogas into electricity and heat. Okay, so considering the advantages of solid oxide fuel cell system, we are now working on these two projects where the main idea is revalorization the agrofood waste and use the produce biogas as fuel for solid oxide fuel cell system. Okay, one of the project is focused on the development of a novel solid oxide fuel cell system using advanced manufacturing technique such as powder injection molding and fused filament fabrication, which is a, one of the 3D printing alternatives and by using these technologies we can produce more complex geometry prototypes where the problem associated with the cell ceiling could be avoided or minimized increasing the efficiencies and lifetime of the system which are the main barriers for the market penetration of these devices okay in the second project we are implementing the dark fermentation to the global process in order to transform the agricultural waste, such as sonium skins, into biogas, and then use this biogas as fuel in the developed soft system. These two projects are funded by the Junta de Comunidades de Castilla-La Mancha and the European Union. Next, I will show you some results on the projects. As you can see in this slide, we are now manufacturing highly filed ceramic and metallic filaments, which can be printed in a low cost 3D printer machine. And the use of this 3D printing or additive manufacturing technology allow us to explore the fabrication of soft systems with complex geometries in order to increase the efficiency and the system lifetime. Okay, once we have selected the desired geometry, we will transfer the design to, to be produced by powder injection molding in order to achieve high volume production with complex geometries and reduce the cost. Okay, now we are in the middle of the projects and we have developed, implemented and standardized the advanced manufacturing technique the injection molding and fused filament fabrication and also the dim film deposition techniques such as wet powder spray or deep coating for the single cell fabrication. We carried out the electrochemical characterization of single cells using hydrogen as fuel and now we are starting the electrochemical characterization using biogas as fuel and designing and constructing the, the dark fermentation reactor. Okay, just to finish the presentation, I would like to mark that in the salt field, uh, we are looking for industrial or not industrial partners to apply for a new projects. We think that it's an open field where new approaches and innovations are demanded. For this purpose, we can offer our expertise in the optimization of rheological suspensions, we can offer our expertise in the common manufacturing techniques such as tape casting, slip casting, wet powder spray, dipping. Also in the advanced manufacturing techniques such as powder injection molding and fused filament fabrication. 
Also, we can offer our expertise in the uh, syn compounds, sy synthesis compounds, in the microstructural control of the films on the, uh, and the supports, and also in the physicochemical and electrochemical characterization of the developer devices. Okay, in the same way, I want to point out that at the institutional level, we are also looking for industrial or academic partners to apply for new projects. And we can develop activities related to the waste revalorization, including the carbon dioxide, the renewable energy integration for the green hydrogen production, for example, or something like that. And we, we can offer also our expertise, or we can work in the fuel cells and electrolyzers developments in the hydrogen storage system, in the processes simulation, and also in the socioeconomic and cross-cutting issues. So this is all, and thank you for your attention. If you need any collaboration in the hydrogen value chains, here are, so contact us. So thank you a lot, Roberto, uh, for your detailed presentation and also for being so specific in your last slides, uh, saying exactly what you can offer and what you're looking for. So anyone who could be interested can just contact and, and collaborate. I would like to remind you that you can make some questions, you can make any question uh, using the chat and we will uh, direct each question to, to the participants uh, before the end of the session. Now is the turn of Oscar de la Rubia. He is the Operations and Research and Development Manager at ISFOC. ISFOC is the Institute for Concentration Photovoltaic Systems, which is also based in, in Puerto Llano. Oscar is a CPB expert with more than 15 years of experience in renewable energies and is official member of the International Elect Electromechanical Commission. So, please, Oscar, your turn. Okay. Well, uh, I, I, I thank you very much for uh, to the Apex uh, to give us uh, uh, the opportunity to to uh, to participate in this uh, in this uh, webinar. Okay, and I will try to explain uh, what is ISHOC, what uh, we are doing in the photovoltaic uh, field. Uh, we are also speak about uh, the, the the project that we are working on. Uh, this is an Horizon 2020 project where uh, we collaborate with a lot of companies uh, of uh, Europe. And at the end of the presentation, I will explain to you uh, what are the capabilities or, or the opportunities in in Spain and um, and mainly in Castilla-La Mancha for the PV uh, for the PV sector. Okay, ISFOC is, an, uh, is a public company, we are an NRD company, and we are focused uh, our research in the uh, photovoltaic fields. We work in photovoltaic technologies uh, during the whole life of the product, of the product and um, projects, uh, developing technology, developing uh, projects, and helping companies for uh, development of technology. We work also uh, in energy efficiency and also in intelligent network sensors. Uh, all the objective of ISFOC is to collaborate with companies in order to, to, to develop the technology. ISFOC was created by the uh, regional government of Castilla-La Mancha. We are located in, in Puerto Llano. Uh, we are uh, neighbors of uh, the uh, CNH2. And uh, well, this is a, a, a small city in the center of, uh, of Spain. Well, in ISFOC, uh, oh, oh, most of our personnel are engineers. We have engineers of, of all uh, different uh, techniques uh, and all the areas of the, of the science. We have electrical engineers, mechanical engineers, telecommunication, energy, electronic engineers, IT engineers. Then this uh, variety of, uh, of uh, areas of the science permit us to 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 afford uh, big projects with a lot of uh, of technological uh, requirements we can solve a lot of projects 
we work always under uh, the, the the most standard uh, the standards of quality and and, and for uh, uh, quality the ISO uh, 9001 and in this moment we are working trying to be accredited uh, in our labs to have the labs accredited for uh, testing and make some uh, testing products. Well, in this talk, we have a lot of uh, uh, laboratories because we are focusing R&D. And then I, 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 I will introduce you some uh, laboratories that uh, we have. We have a solar simulator in our uh, facilities in Puerto Llano. This uh, laboratory uh, allows us to, to measure all kind of PV devices. We can measure all kind of modules. We can uh, make a lot of different measurements under uh, standard conditions. We can control temperature and, and, and also the solar irradiation. And this is, these are indoor uh, measures that we can compare with outdoor measures. We use this laboratory for uh, technology development, for development of uh, modules. And also uh, we use this when uh, a big, uh, large uh, PV uh, power plant is going to be built, we can measure indoor some uh, modules and we can keep uh, these modules and we can also study the evolution of the degradation in large PV power plants. We uh, have also a climatic test laboratory. We have two big uh, chambers where we can make a lot of uh, different uh, tests because uh, we, uh, we can adapt uh, a lot of, uh, how to say, cycles uh, with the temperature and the humidity and then we can test a lot of things. Uh, we work with the uh, automotive uh, parts, uh, we work also with electrical manufacturer, with uh, PV manufacturer, with a lot of uh, different companies and we can test these this, uh, devices in, in our lab. And I think that uh, by the end of the year we will be accredited uh, with uh, with the IEC uh, 1755 in order to, to, to can um, homologate and certify uh, the products that we can test. We have an also an outdoor laboratory. The outdoor laboratory has a, a high precision two axis uh, tracking system and, uh, and then we can measure in real operation condition all kind of devices, of PV devices. Then, then we can correlate uh, the data that we measure in this outdoor laboratory with the uh, measurements that we can done in, in our indoor laboratory in our solar simulator. Uh, well, most in the PV sector, most of you know that there are two uh, main you know, how to say, uh, sec sub sectors. Uh, we have the large PV power plants connected to the grid and a new well, not so new, but a new market that it's getting uh, uh, kilowatts day per day is the uh, uh, residential installations uh, for self-consumption. Then we have a lab in which uh, we can test inverters, uh, batteries, and uh, uh, energy management systems, and we can test and develop this kind of, of devices, and, and we can test in our labs that uh, we have here in, in, in our facilities. Then we have a mechatronics laboratory and also a, a, a computer and software uh, development laboratory. Then what it means that we can develop electronics and also uh, the software associated with this uh, hardware in order to uh, have, uh, for example, uh, monitorizations or we can measure uh, with sensors and we can uh, develop communication between sensors, SCADAs, and we use this, for example, for uh, uh, hardware and software for PV monitoring and any other uh, fields that we can monitor. We have also a uh, 3D, 3D printing uh, laboratory. We have a large uh, 3D uh, printer uh, and we can also this allows us to make or manufacture our own prototypes in our facilities. We can develop the mechanical prototypes with this uh, printer and also we can make all the hardware and software associated and we can uh, develop the prototype to be tested indoor in our labs, outdoor in, in our labs or any other uh, site. 
then this is I, I, I showed you uh, uh, the, the labs that we have, and these are our main R&D lines in which we work. We have three main uh, groups, uh, the integrated photovoltaics, and also the intelligent sensor networks and the hybrid photovoltaics. I mean, integrated photovoltaics, we are working in several projects and making some, and or doing some uh, researching about the uh, building integration of photovoltaics, to integrate the photovoltaics in buildings, uh, the integration of photovoltaics in vehicles, and also the integration of photovoltaics in agriculture, and also the integration of photovoltaics in urban uh, um, devices. And with the intelligent sensors, uh, we are working with the uh, agriculture. We, in this moment, for example, we are working with a winery trying to, to, to monitor the, uh, the plants and also how the plants are growing. Uh, this is a project that we are working on now. We work in the area of smart cities and smart photovoltaic power plant, residential system and smart forest also. We can monitor uh, uh, forest in this area. And we have another uh, topic is the hybrid photovoltaics integrating uh, different uh, concepts of photovoltaics. We work in low concentration photovoltaics. We can uh, uh, we work in this and also in high concentration photovoltaic. High and low concentration is the level of concentration of the light onto the, the solar cell. And we have some um, uh, research about uh, concentration photovoltaics and thermal. We can produce electricity and heat in the same device and also some other lines like a static concentration photovoltaic system. This is because for concentration, it is required a, a tracking system to, to focus or to point uh, the lenses onto the, the to directly to the sun. And we are working in some static concentration photovoltaic that, that we, will allow us to make also in concentration photovoltaics building integration. This is the, the, the next step in the, in the future. Then we offer also some service and collaboration to the, uh, to the companies. We, have, uh, we can offer training in photovoltaics and we have also here in our installation, we offer the possibility to, to, uh, to, uh, to work with companies in our facilities and give them uh, our uh, our, our know-how and our labs and collaboration in order to, 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 to collaborate in their uh, enterprise uh, growth. And we have some also so, some products that we sell in the, in, in the market. Well, now I, I will show you, I will be very fast now, I, I will show you uh, the European project in which we are working now. This is an Horizon 2020. The project is focused in building integration photovoltaics. And well, I will be, I will go very fast. The name of the project is uh, build, uh, v, VIPV Boost. Uh, we are the object of the objective. The project is to bring down the cost of the uh, building integration photovoltaic system, uh, system in the uh, medium term uh, cost reduction in the roadmap. Well, this is the topic. The total budget of the project is around uh, 11 uh, millions of, of, of euros. We collaborate with uh, 19 uh, partners from seven different countries. Here you can uh, see uh, our partners and the are the countries, and it's structured in in, in ten work packages. Always looking, uh, trying to reduce the cost of all the chain of the building integration photovoltaics manufacturer. What I mean, we are working in trying to uh, achieve uh, uh, the uh, near zero uh, emissions buildings, trying to reduce the, uh, the cost of this. We are working in the manufacturing line, trying to reduce the cost of this uh, kind of devices. We are working also in the reduction of the cost of the modules and uh, also uh, the, uh, uh, how we can reduce the cost of the integration of these devices in the skin buildings and also in the standards associated to this kind of devices and we have some uh, we will have some demonstration uh, buildings in, in the project this is uh, a building of Tecnalia in the north of Spain we will have any other 
So we will have any other uh, buildings and, and we will be monitoring all the devices, the devices trying to get data for uh, to, uh, to give this data to the modules, trying to be able for uh, available for designers and architects and so on. And we will have these four main uh, uh, demonstration installation. This is our building. And here, for example, in our building, we will have balustrades, photovoltaics, and bifacial uh, modules, and also we will have a PV floor in our installations. But that's all about the project here. You can see uh, the, 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 the project, this is the hashtag, and where you can get more information about this. And then, I don't know if I go very fast, but well, at the end, I think that this is the most important part of the presentation. It is very short, but I will, I want to explain how is Spain and, 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 and Castilla-La Mancha for the PV sector. Okay, as you can see here, uh, Spain is the, the country with the higher uh, solar irradiation in all the, the Europe. Here you can see uh, the irradiation that we have in Spain uh, compared with other countries in, in Europe. And as you can see, uh, just uh, last year in 2019, Spain is again in the top 10 uh, solar markets. And we expect a, a growth with new capacity uh, very high next years and uh, well, with a growth uh, rate around the 20% and the political uh, support that uh, the sector have in this moment is very sunny, like our sector. Okay, then in the national plan for climate change in Spain, it is estimated to, to install three gigawatts per year uh, of photovoltaic sticks until 2030. And this is Castilla Mancha. Castilla Mancha is here in the middle of Spain uh, we have very high irradiation values, more or less, more or less uh, in the same level of Andalusia, but here uh, we have more uh, more land, more space, for space compared with Andalusia. And then this is why the PV projects in Spain in Castilla La Mancha are, are profitable. This is for the sun. And if we compare data that we have out accumulated uh, capacity of PV and the new capacity for uh, PV in Castilla-La Mancha. You can see that Castilla-La Mancha is the second region in Spain with the uh, accumulated capacity stall and also for the new capacity for PV. I think that next year with the support of the, our regional government, I think that we will be, uh, uh, we will have higher uh, values for, or, or capacity of PV than, than uh, Andalusia. Well, that's all. I, uh, you can, uh, we are working in, in, in R&D and in the solar sector uh, since 2006, more than 10 years, uh, working in R&D and for the photovoltaic uh, field. And we are open for any collaboration, not only for, uh, only for uh, European projects funded by the uh, European Commission, or projects financed by the uh, national government. And if you want to, to, to come to Spain and to come to Castilla-La Mancha, uh, if you don't know who door you have to knock, you can knock our door, is or you can contact me directly in this uh, email and we will be glad to, to, to help you and to collaborate with you. That's all. Thank you a lot, Oscar, uh, for saying what you're doing. You're doing amazing projects and also helping many other to, uh, to go forward. So uh, it's great to know more about it and now that many other people can know. So now is the time to uh, go for the last presentation of, of the season. We are very happy to welcome Vestas. Uh, I think there's no need to introduce Vestas as they are the world's first wind turbine generators. And they are present in Castilla-La Mancha since 2008, when the company opened its blade production plant in, in Daimiel, in the province of Ciudad Real, where they have 850 workers. Today we have Pedro Huarte Mendicoa, he's head of public affairs for, the, for Europe, Middle East and Asia and Latin America. And he will be speaking about the company, about the oil sector in Spain, and also the opportunities in Castilla-La Mancha. Okay, thank you.
So thank you, everyone. Um, good morning, everyone. Um, um, my name is Pedro Huarte. I'm happy we were able to, to share the video. People say that uh, an image is worth more than a thousand words. So I think anything I have to say is much better shown on the on the video of the, of the factory. But thank you very much to the to the government of Castilla-La Mancha, Itex, and the different chambers of commerce in Spain for allowing us this opportunity to to, to introduce Vestas and our, and our experience in the, in Castilla-La Mancha since uh, 12 years as, as investor. Today I will I will give a brief presentation of Vestas globally, Vestas in Spain, the wind power sector in, in Spain, where we are today, and then finally uh, our factory in, in, in Daimiel and, 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 and the competitive advantage we, we have seen in the in the region. So without further delay, very briefly, Vestas is a Danish multinational, uh, 40 years old, started in the 17 1979, with the three engineers in the western part of uh, Denmark, in Jutland, engineering the first uh, kilowatt type turbines, 30 kilowatts. They saw that work, so they, they, they kept the business growing. And today we're 25,000 employees with uh, 117 gigawatts of uh, wind power capacity installed uh, across the globe in 81 countries so far. And also with uh, more than 100 gigawatts of uh, wind turbines uh, under operation and maintenance just passed the threshold last year. Uh, last year's uh, revenues were uh, 12 million euros. So if I had to emphasize the strengths of the company, for me, it would be the large uh, the large scale we have on the on diversification across the globe. That helps us a lot to create great economies of scale and to reduce the cost of energy. Then the financial health of the, the companies uh, uh, today, uh, and, and, and of course, our technology, which we upgrade constantly and we invest in, in R and D constant basis. We cover the whole value chain of the, of the of the wind sector, from research and development, project planning and siting and design of the projects, the procurement, of course, and the manufacturing of the wind turbines, construction and installation of the of the of the wind turbines and the, and the wind farms. It can be only on supply and installation, or it can also cover the whole EPC. The value chain, you know, including cabling, substations, civil works, and everything. And finally, the operation and maintenance of the wind farms for the whatever contract we have 2025 years. This was our origin take last year, quite diversified. And you can see geographically almost 15 gigawatts. That's uh, that was a record year, by the way. And you can see we got orders from uh, from all the continents mainly. But the you know, northern Europe, the west, uh, west Europe, southern Europe, central in the U.S., which is our main market, uh, uh, etc., all, 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 all across the globe. And this, of course, is happening because wind sector is, is growing in uh, across the world. It's not anymore a niche the technology. It is now a mainstream technology, quite uh, competitive. This is this is why, right? I mean, it's not just an uh, environmentally friendly technology anymore in the fight uh, against climate change. But now it's the most competitive uh, renewable energy source and, and source of generation overall across the globe, together with solar PV, with, with, with tracking. But you know the cost of uh, the less cost of energy of, from wind has gone down uh, around uh, 51, 50 percent in the last 10 years. Now it's around 47 US dollars per megawatt hour across the globe. So a very competitive source of so, so electricity generation. Uh, this is our portfolio of, uh, of technology, uh, very diverse, very, very switched, you know, and, and able to, to, to shift to, to the different conditions of, uh, of wind across certain regimes of wind. We have the 2 megawatt platform and the 4 megawatt platform. And finally, the Inventus, the latest one with the, with the latest announced turbine. It was two weeks ago, the V162, 6 megawatt for, for onshore. Then we have a separate company. We were together with Mitsubishi Heavy Industries and Vestas, the offshore, offshore business but the investors, which will do mainly uh, onshore uh, and some hybridization as well. The, the latest uh, turbine in the market is uh, six megawatt. Uh, right now, we're installing the, the, the prototype. So very, very diverse portfolio, also very modular that we, we manufacture now. It's kind of like a Lego. You have all the components and you can combine them to better fit the, 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 the projects and to have a faster mark to, to market. This is our, our global manufacturing footprint where, where, where we manufacture it. Uh, the, in blue, uh, uh, in nine countries, uh, when we own as best as the factories, which is the case of the email in Spain, for example. And then in, in, in purple, we, when we have subcontractors in Spain, for example, we have four subcontractors for the towers, 
And then in some countries like Russia or Argentina, we have gone through a, through a JV with a local partner, which is also a, a good model, model to go to go ahead. Finally, the, the service uh, the business, which is quite relevant investors as well. As I mentioned, we have uh, 45,000 turbines spinning where that we monitor. There's a huge amount of information we, we gather from that to, to learn to the preventive maintenance uh, for many things. Also, uh, it's, a, it's a great source of, of job creation. I mean, 20,000 employees from investors, 40% of the payroll are, are from our service technicians. And then a great source, of course, of of the stable revenues in the in the future because this controls are typically 15 or 20, 20 years. So overall, this this could order intake and help us to, to keep our global leaders position, which uh, you know is accumulated tends to be around 17 percent. If you look at the global market last year, it was 18 percent of the of the market, but that's globally. You know everything that was installed 53 mega gigawatts. If you take at China, which is have the have the wind market. Uh, then 26 gigawatts will have uh, 34 percent. That means that one every three turbines is uh, in the world has uh, last year was uh, was just turbine. Yeah, I was uh, a bit uh, fast on that part, but I think it's more interesting for you that we speak about the wind power sector in Spain and, and of course uh, Castilla-La Mancha and, uh, and the Emil. So wind power sector in Spain is is a key sector, a key one. I mean, we, we have a sectorial agenda agreed with the Ministry of Industry. And that's only for the top uh, industrial sectors in Spain. As you can see in the slide, this is from the Wind Power Association AE, where we're members of the board. Uh, Spain is the is, is the second European country in, in terms of uh, wind power installed capacity, or fifth in the world. So not not bad. We have uh, actually now 26, 26,500 megawatts installed already. So we are now by installed capacity the first uh, energy. Uh, electricity generation uh, uh, technology in Spain, and we're the second in uh, in, in generation with 20% of the electricity generated by, by wind. Uh, we represent roughly 0.31% of the GDP of Spain, 3.58 billion euros. We have uh, 21,000 turbines in Spain, in Spain, 207 factories or, is the, or the production centers uh, across 16 uh, uh, out of the 17 autonomous regions, 1,200 wind farm wind farms uh, installed, and then very importantly, we're the third country, the third exporter in the world after Denmark and, and Germany. And some people don't know, but we export more in value than, than sectors like typical sectors of Spain, like health, sorry, like uh, wine or or shoes. So uh, wind uh, components is uh, is very larger, and we employ around 20,000 people. So this is installed capacity in Spain. As I mentioned, 26.5 gigawatts. Uh, in July, we, we surpassed the uh, combined cycle and the first uh, technology in Spain installed capacity. The six, uh, the, the three, five uh, main regions are Castilla León, afterwards Castilla-La Mancha. That's almost 4,000 megawatts installed of wind. Uh, and then the Galicia, Andalucía, Aragón. I might say that the, in, in Castilla-La Mancha, as a second region, wind uh, wind is quite uh, is quite relevant. But also in the latest years, uh, there's been less installations. So I think uh, it's a good moment to to to, to push back to push again for the for the development of wind projects in the in the region, because as we will see now, there are going to be a lot of financing, a lot of opportunities. And now with the new technologies, you know, for low and and, and medium wind regimes, I think there will be. Uh, many more uh, sites where we can explore in the, in the in the community. So overall, the supply chain of the of the of the of the, of the sector in Spain, we cover 100% of the supply chain. You know, a full turbine can be wind turbine can be manufactured in Spain. You have engineering companies you can do studies. You have uh, four large OEMs, uh, original equipment manufacturers ourselves, and three more uh, manufacturing in Spain. The logistics. Very good civil civil uh, and construction companies that can do turnkey projects and the operation and maintenance. So it's it's a it's an industrial uh, critical sector in Spain. It has also been very resilient resilient during the, the pandemic times. And uh, um, ourselves, for example, we only closed the factory in the mill for a week. The rest we have been operating the factory the, during the pandemic. The the, the wind farms uh, servicing them and, and and everything. And I think it's all interesting. From now on, to, to keep in mind that the, that the 
renewable energy and wind in particular is very high on the agenda of the Spanish government. You can see here the, the, the objectives of the, of the renewable energy, uh, the National Renewable Energy and Climate Change Plan, which is already approved by the European Commission over 2030. So the plan is to, to double the installed capacity of wind by 2030 to reach 50 gigawatts. That will allow us to, 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 to increase from 20% penetration of renewable energy and final energy consumption to 42%, which is the current of, uh, objective. But of course, this may even increase because, as, as, as you will know, the Commission has proposed overall in Europe to go from, uh, from 32 to 38% in the, in the European goals. So that might affect also the, the Spanish ones. And in addition, we, we have the now uh, the, the announced uh, EU Green Deal with the resilient and recovery EU resilient recovery package. I think it's 170, 170 billion euros of loans. Uh, no, 140 billion euros of loans out of the 750 that are going to come to Spain, half and half uh, between loans and grants. So there's going to be uh, a lot of uh, a, a lot of financing coming up. And as I said, the uh, when the and the renewable energy sector is high on the agenda of the of the of the government, so there will be plenty of opportunities. In addition, there's you know a climate change and energy law coming up already under a discussion at the parliament. There is uh, the renewable energy auctions at national level already announced, and the first one coming up before the end of, of the year. And then already you see, for example, the the, the green tech connections. Uh, there's, already around 50 gigawatts of wind projects with a green interconnection or requested green interconnection. So there's a huge pipeline of projects uh, coming in. Where we are as best as in Spain, very, very quickly, we started uh, in Spain in year 1989 with the first uh, kilowatt type turbines, very small ones. But since then we have been growing steadily in the, in the country. Now we have 4,807 megawatts installed in 100 uh, wind farms across uh, the, all the ge Spanish geography, and we have almost uh, 7,000 megawatts under operation and maintenance. Roughly five uh, gigawatts are Vestas, uh, I mean, all, all of the Vestas turbines, and the rest we, we service turbines from other manufacturers. And then we have in Madrid, what is, uh, we're, we're in the office now in Madrid, is the, the hub that we call the, the Med region. So it's a business unit that reports to Denmark, and from here we cover all that time, Southern Europe, uh, Northern Africa and the Middle East, so pretty, pretty big region based in, in Madrid with investors. So, um, in addition to that, we have 14 operation maintenance uh, centers. Uh, we have roughly in Spain 2,200 employees, mostly in the factories, in the two factories we have, uh, one in uh, the Blade factory in Ciudad Real, and then we have another one in Lugo that we produce generators. So, between the two of them is uh, 1,500 employees. Then we have the service technicians for 100 and then 200 located here in Madrid in the, in the region of headquarters. And then we, we buy towers from uh, four Spanish suppliers and we also generate business for around a thousand Spanish suppliers over in, in the country. In Castilla-La Mancha, we, we have uh, installed uh, 16 wind farms. You can see here the, the list, roughly 100 megawatts, which we service now. We have a contract for, for operation and maintenance of those. Now, let's see how I'm going with time. All right, very quickly. Uh, on the manufacturing uh, in Daimiel, this, uh, we've been in Daimiel since the uh, year 2008, uh, 12 years already, uh, growing uh, steadily. Um, it is, I must say, I have visited it quite a few times, and it's a very impressive uh, installation. Very interesting because it's very modern in terms of uh, the sourcing of materials and the production. Uh, on the production uh, uh, techniques, but at the same time, you know, we have uh, 1,300 employees there, so it's very manual and very, very interesting to, to visit. In the words of the, of the, of the manager of the, of the factory, the most competitive fact Vestas factory, the blade factory, we have eight, including China and India. And, you know, he, he keeps uh, reminding me that we are the most competitive, so I must uh, believe him, and that shows that uh, that the Spain and particularly Castilla La Mancha is a, is a great hub for, for investing in manufacturing because we, we are competitive. So we started uh, with the first investment in year 2008, it was uh, 90 million euros plus 10 million euros of grants uh, received by the regional government, both for investment in, in technology in CapEx and also for training. And then uh, we have been uh, growing with different extensions in the year 2015, 
we, we acquired new modules and we expand the factory to, to manufacture longer blades for the V126. Uh, and then finally, in, in 2018, there was a new large upgrade to produce the, now the largest we, uh, blades that we manufactured for the V1 features, almost uh, 80 meter blades, uh, really long. We had the inauguration of these new lines with, uh, with Minister Manato, the Minister of Industry in year 2018. And also we invested in, in, a, in, a, in a hub, worldwide hub, where, where you could use the, the, the segments, the rooted segments that connect the, the, the hub with the, with the blades. That's in the middle as well. It was a, an investment last year of, of 50 million euros. And from Daimir, we export uh, mainly, well, also for the project in Spain, but we export mainly to all Europe, across Europe and Northern Europe, 70%, 5% to the US and Canada, and the rest to, to, to several countries. So workforce has grown steadily in the last uh, years, as you can see, uh, especially in manufacturing, but uh, overall. So now we are almost uh, 104,000 employees uh, of direct employment and 1,000 of our indirect. We create business for other uh, subcontractors. They come from 80 different towns across Castilla-La Mancha, but mainly from the Miel itself, Ciudad Real, and Puerto Llano. And the average age, I mean, it's, it's four years old, but, but because in the last four years, you know, 500 people joined the, the company in the factory, but in reality, it's more like 10 years old. Competitive advantages uh, that we see uh, for having this uh, factory in the Miel, first of all, we have a uh, a wide range of suppliers available in the region, as you can see, and the workforce uh, available with, uh, with, good, uh, with good training and a variety of university degrees and high, with high level skills. Then, and I want to emphasize this point, the local and, and, and regional administration support is key and it has been key for us and, it's, and we are truly grateful for this. I mean, you, you know, especially in the pandemic times, you know, things, uh, can go south at some point, you know, it can be, become problematic, especially when the pandemic hit at the beginning. And in general, always we have been, you know, uh, very blessed with the support of the, of the regional government. We're very thankful for, for, for that. And I think this should be something to be uh, uh, prioritized as a, as, as a key competitive advantage when we invest in a, in a country. That's uh, it's key that uh, good relationship. And finally, the good location and, and well uh, uh, connection of the uh, on the, on, on, of Daimiel, it was mentioned before. You can see here on the map that we are roughly 300 kilometers uh, to Valencia port or Madrid port in, in Granada. When we did the study of these two ports, uh, we finally decided to go through Madrid. And you can imagine, you know, we're exporting, I mean, very large equipment. It's 80, almost 80 meter, meter long uh, blades that you have to cross. Uh, 300 kilometers. The infrastructure in Spain, the highways is fantastic. We had to do a few changes on some roundabouts and take out some signs and stuff, but for the rest is completely fine. And we found out it was uh, it was most most competitive the Madrid port in terms of handling costs and also transportation costs. We are also 200 kilometers away from Madrid, connected to the to the Madrid airport by high speed train. The Ciudad airport is a small one; it can also be used. We had our CEO coming down to Madrid. Sorry, to Daimiel, to the factory last year, and he came directly to Daimiel, and that's 20 kilometers from the factory. And then finally, very well connected by railway, uh, even to, to China, where we import components for the factory. You can, you know, we do it by, by rail directly, so it's faster than, 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 than by, by ships. And finally, we have industrial landfills available in the region, even though, of course, you know, we want to send uh, uh, less and less. Uh, uh, you know, uh, parts to the landfill and be able to recycle, hopefully by 2040 is our goal to be able to recycle all the turbines completely. But in the meantime, we have a new to life available with all the needed infrastructures. And that's uh, that's all from my side. Uh, sorry if I took too long, uh, but I hope it was interesting for you and I'm open up for, for questions or anything you might need from, from me. Thank you. It's been really interesting, Pedro. Thank you very much for sharing all the information about Vesta about what you're doing in Castilla-La Mancha. And very especially, thank you for sharing your uh, ideas about the competitive advantages uh, from our region. It's a real pleasure to have you here with us. We are behind schedule, like 20 minutes behind schedule. So we will be a short version of the QA time. So um, I will just uh, drive some questions to a couple of participants and the rest of questions we will directly direct uh, we send it to the others and 
so you, we can let you go and, and respect your, your time. So uh, I, I do have you here, Pedro, so I will go with this question. Um, uh, it's, 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 I will just read it. How do you see the future of wind energy in these times that hydrogen takes the lead in the news? <laughs> Good question. Uh, wind is going to be a, a, a great uh, friend technology of hydrogen. We're actually already uh, already investors uh, participating in several consortiums in the European Union, and we have a specific R&D department in Denmark that developing the, the energy management management system to connect the, the hydrogen production through electrolysis with uh, the, with the green electricity production. So at the end, if we want to decarbonize uh, the economy, uh, we need to produce the hydrogen through renewable energy sources, what is called the green hydrogen. And this can only be done mainly by the cheapest ones, which are wind and solar, right? So for us, it's a, it's a, it's a, we see as a, as a key uh, vector of, uh, or carrier for, 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 for energy in the future. And we we're planning as a company to be fully, fully participant of it, providing our expertise on energy management now coupled with the, with the production of electricity through electrolysis to produce uh, green hydrogen. So great uh, future, and it's just going to keep helping us to, to further electrify the, the, the economy, especially in those sectors, the hard sectors, which are uh, more difficult to, to electrify through direct uh, electrification with renewables. So you have the industry, the automotive, and others, which are more difficult. Then the hydrogen is going to help us uh, decarbonize that sector as well, the green hydrogen. Excellent. Thank you a lot. And I do have another question for Oscar from the CNH2. When the cost of the full cell is expected to be cost effective? I got the okay. question, but I don't know when. Uh, we are doing a lot of efforts to, to reduce the, the prices. And if you see the, the European Commission predictions in the next years, the, the fuel cells prices will be much lower than now, so I don't know. <laughs> yeah, difficult to, to But in, in the next years, we are doing a lot of efforts in these in these ways, in the way to, to reduce the cost of the systems, yeah. Okay, so we are almost 10 minutes behind the schedule, so we want uh, we will stop here. I really hope, and we all really hope that this has been worth it and it will be useful for you. And of course, speaking in the name of the regional government and also I think from the, in the name of the other speakers in this session, we are completely available to continue the conversation after this session and uh, in a way that we can help you to have the information or to proceed with any project that you want to keep going uh, in Castilla-La Mancha. So thank you very, very much for your time and see you soon. Thank you. Bye.